In the heart of the Lesser Antilles lies a tropical paradise with unrivaled natural beauty. This volcanic island is equal parts rugged and lush. On one side, it's battered by the swelling waves of the Atlantic Ocean, and the other is fringed by the tranquil Caribbean Sea. It boasts the only waters on Earth that are home to the elusive sperm whale year-round. It's a place where you can find yourself diving amongst vibrant coral reefs in the morning, hiking beneath a waterfall in the afternoon, and soaking in a natural hot spring as night falls. This is the Nature Island. This is Dominica. After a stressful day, we finally arrived. We left the house at 4 this morning, got to the Grand Rapids airport, and then we just sat on the tarmac. And then by the time we made it to Miami, our flight had already boarded and they were closed up and ready to take off. Luckily, they let us on the flight. They reopened the plane for us because the next flight doesn't happen until two days from now. But we're here now. We haven't eaten anything but Biscoff cookies and pretzels today. <laughs> uh, so we're about to go find something to eat. After dinner, we checked into our Airbnb and settled in for some much needed sleep. We are super grateful to the crew of American Airlines Flight 3871 for opening up the cabin for us after they had it closed because otherwise we would be in Miami right now not seeing this amazing view because this is probably one of the coolest Airbnbs of all time. I'm going to have to do a walkthrough. for the week, the Ramelton Estate, was as special as the island itself. Tucked into the trees up in the mountains, this solar-powered house had everything we needed to make our stay relaxing and comfortable, including incredible views. After sunrise, we set out in search of Wavin Serik, a waterfall that plummets from a tall cliff into the Atlantic Ocean. Trying to find this place was an adventure in itself. An adventure which led us to a goat pasture, a watermelon farm, and finally to the Garden of Nicodemus, the man who owns the property that Wabin Sadiq Trail is on. We didn't end up making it to the bottom of the waterfall because the proper ropes weren't in place to safely descend the cliff. But we did stay for a while to hang out with Nicodemus and his family, including three adorable puppies. Before we left, Nicodemus cut open some fresh coconuts for us to drink and supplied us with all of the herbs we would need to make a bush tea later. We also left with a great tip about where we should hike next. The hike we tried to do earlier was a bit of a bust, but we met a really nice family. And they also told us about this hike that we could do that's a little safer, down to a volcanic pool by the edge of the ocean that we can swim in. The hike to Glassy Point traversed through one of the lushest jungles I've ever seen and was completely devoid of other hikers. It took us a long time to get down to the pools because there were so many beautiful views and plants to stop and look at. When we finally jumped into the natural pool, the seawater was a welcome relief from the day's heat. The hike back uphill used up almost all of the rest of our daylight, and we spent the evening unwinding and listening to the peaceful sound of night bugs.
Our second morning began with a drive to the capital city of Rozo, where we met up at the Fort Young Hotel's dive shop and picked up our gear rentals. Bonnie and Rachel stayed at the hotel and did a Discover scuba dive program, while Vince and I hopped aboard a boat that carried us and a handful of other divers south until we could see Scott's head on the southern tip of the island. Our first dive of the day was at a site called La Bine, where we dived along a coral wall that dropped off into an endless abyss. I was delighted by the colorful sponges that covered the wall, but the best part of the dive was seeing a seahorse, a first for me since they are so tiny and can be very difficult to spot. After warming up during our surface interval, we jumped back into the water at nearby Point Denad. My favorite part of this dive was seeing a huge king crab. Once everyone was back on dry land, we went to the old market of Rozo for some souvenir shopping. The market was closed off for everyone except passengers of the cruise ship that was docked in port, but the vendors were still happy to do business with us through the backs of their stalls. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. Right now we're in Rosso at the Botanical Gardens. I found a friend. We made a friend. She was very sweet. We had come to the garden to look for a crushed school bus. And while we weren't sure exactly where it was, our new canine friend led us straight there. This bus was crushed by the baobab tree that still sits on top of it during Hurricane David in 1979 and has been left untouched ever since. By afternoon, we were ready to leave Roseau and return to the forest. We made a visit to one of the most talked about destinations on the island, Trafalgar Falls. This twin waterfall in Morne Tropiton National Park was jaw-droppingly beautiful, and we had a blast climbing around the boulders at the base of the falls and swimming in refreshing pools. The top of the hill also has a hot sulfur spring bubbling out of the earth. so much fun at Trafalgar that we ended up visiting twice. That evening, Jimmy, the caretaker of the Rambleton, and his friend KB came over with all of the ingredients to make KB's delicious pizza recipe.
pizza was fantastic, and I ate way more of it than I was planning to. We just wrapped up our second day in Dominica. We started out the day with a couple of dives. We went on some boat dives and the corals here are the healthiest, most amazing corals that I've seen anywhere in the Caribbean by far. After that, we walked around Rousseau for a little bit, which is the capital main city of Dominica. Um, it's also a cruise port and there was a cruise ship in today. So that was interesting to see. It's interesting because we really didn't see a lot of tourists. We haven't seen a lot of tourists yet it's only been two days, but so far it's not as touristy as the other Caribbean islands I've been to. Another thing we've noticed so far is that the hospitality here is amazing and the people here are super friendly. The caretaker for our Airbnb, Jimmy, and his friend KB came over tonight and they made us this amazing pizza. Like, everything was made from scratch. The dough was made from scratch. The sauce was made from scratch. It was covered in like the freshest, best ingredients. It was one of the best pizzas I've ever had. And I've had a lot of pizza and I've made a lot of pizza and it's better than any pizza I've ever made. Tomorrow night, we're having them back over and we're gonna cook for them. So it's just been nice to spend the past couple of days getting to know the island and settling in. And then tomorrow we get adventure -y. We've got a canyoning tour in the morning which is gonna involve a lot of rappelling and jumping. Jumping scares me to death, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I didn't Why do that. Because canyoning got canceled. <laughs> it worked. Good as new. Our canyoning tour got postponed slash potentially canceled because it rained so much last night and this morning that the river is too dangerous to go in. Instead of that, we tried to come to the freshwater lake, which is supposed to be really pretty, and I'm sure it is, except you can't see it. Even though the weather seemed determined to wash away all of our plans, we knew just the way to spend a rainy day with a long soak in the Tiquen Glocho Hot Springs. This was our chance to enjoy some much appreciated relaxation in the warm sulfuric water, and of course to try our first sampling of some of Dominica's famous rum drinks. to actually get some hiking in today even though it's been rainy all day so we're back at the Airbnb and we're hiking down a random trail that we think might lead to a cocoa farm hey Vince this is where the drinking water for our Airbnb comes from Vince and I hiked down to the Ramelton's Ram Pump at the bottom of the hill, where we found a little waterfall and a frigid swimming hole. Everyone was excited for our snorkel tour at Champagne Beach the next morning. We met up with PH Whale Watch Dive and Snorkel at the beach, and they had us suited up and in the water long before larger groups from the cruise ships started to arrive. Our snorkel guide, Carrie, is a marine biology student, and he made our tour great by providing in-depth information about the area and identifying all of the marine life we saw. He also stopped to show us a hill that was used as a filming location in Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Of course, the main attraction was the bubbling warm water that's heated by volcanic springs under the ocean floor.
showed us a couple of coral covered cannons from an old shipwreck and then extended our tour to take us out to the actual wreck. The ship is sunken in about 90 feet of water, which is well beyond my freediving capabilities, but Carrie took my GoPro down to get some footage of the wreck, a green sea turtle, and a spotted eagle ray. After the tour, we had some refreshing rum punch, and Carrie gave us some advice on things to do in nearby Soufriere. I spent the short car ride into town, trying in vain to say Soufriere correctly. We're spending today in the beautiful little town of Soufriere. Okay, everybody's making fun of me because that is the literal first time I've said Soufriere right this entire trip. I cannot say it. Now we're headed to Bubble Beach. We're gonna look for Dale Bubbles and Jennifer Roti. That's what we were told to look for. Mr. Bubbles and Jennifer who makes Roti. Right now we're looking at the oldest church in Dominica. And back on the beach, I can hear Bonnie asking about Jennifer with the roti and it worked. Mr. Bubbles knew who she meant. Whoa. It's so warm. The sand at Bubble Beach was too hot to touch for long, but the water was the temperature of a perfect hot tub. We met a man at Bubble Beach who gave us an impromptu tour of Soufriere as he showed us where to find Jennifer who makes roti. Welcome to my visitor! Come and see what's happening! Welcome to Pasi! Welcome to Paradise! The roti was delicious and after lunch we drove up to the top of Scott's Head to check out its lovely panoramic view. We're on top of Scott's head right now. of a national park nearby, so we drove uphill to Soufriere Sulphur Springs only to find that the roadways and parking lots were becoming overgrown with plants. A power worker stopped to chat and explained that the park was badly damaged in Hurricane Maria, but we could still get to the Sulphur Springs if we followed the power line straight through the jungle. He recommended bringing a guide since the hike would require a lot of bushwhacking. We didn't have enough daylight left to do a hike like that anyway, so Jared sent up his drone and we got to see the springs from a bird's eye view. Later, we returned to Scott's Head to watch the sunset. First thing we're doing today is going whale watching with PH Whale Watch, which is the same company that we went with yesterday for our champagne reef snorkel. And that was super amazing, so today hopefully we'll see some whales. Our guides, Brittany and Cello, found the whales using a hydrophone and then let us all listen in as the whales communicated with clicking sounds. did get to see three sperm whales, two females and a large male. I found this thing that I wrote maybe when I was 25 that was just a list of places that I wanted to go and Dominica was on it. I'm pretty sure it's because I wanted to see sperm whales. So, it happened. Well, Vince and I got up an hour early because it's daylight savings in the US. Our phones changed by an hour. It's not daylight savings here. Luckily that didn't happen the other way around. But now we got a bunch of extra time to sit here and chill. We are supposed to be going on our canyoning tour this morning since this is the day we rescheduled it to. 
but it's still pretty rainy so we don't know if that's gonna happen at all because this is our last chance um, and if it doesn't happen we'll see we'll come up with something to do today Luckily, the tour was on, and we spent the morning gearing up and petting into stream Dominica's two kittens. There was a safety demonstration and lesson on repelling, and then it was canyon time. I was more than a little nervous because I had heard that the jumps on the tour went as high as 20 feet, something I was not sure I would be brave enough to do. I made a promise to myself that I would sincerely try to do every jump, while outwardly expressing that I might skip some of them just to save face if I couldn't bring myself to go through with it. Those were a lot of fun, and the canyon we were traversing was, dare I say, gorgeous. I did a few 10 to 15 foot jumps with no problem and had fun navigating the canyon's various obstacles. When it came time for the big jump, my stomach dropped. We had to walk across a narrow ledge to get to the jump, and I felt my heart crashing adrenaline through my veins as I peered over the edge of the cliff at the 21 foot drop. I had to either jump it or repel, but before I could allow myself to think about it much longer, I just went for it. packed morning we were all super hungry so we went to a local restaurant nearby the food was phenomenal and we had a great time talking to the owner Jean and sampling her rum so it's our last day on Dominica Thanks. last thoughts anyone I want to stay yeah can yeah. we miss our flight With our last few hours on the island, we returned to Montoipitan National Park to visit the idyllic Emerald Pool. Our last stop on Dominica was to Red Beach, where we got drenched by rain one last time. A fitting end to such a rainy week. We're in a very windy place! Well, it rained. It rained a lot. As our plane took off, I was already dreaming up a return to Dominica someday. I want to go back again and experience even more of what this beautiful natural island has to offer. Bye. Jared, you're gonna be so mad when I put You better not put I will disown you. If this makes the end of the vlog, I swear.